In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a multi-step form in Elementor using the Elementor Pro form and a plugin called Dynamic Content for Elementor. And here's an example of what this looks like. So we have a form right here. We have a step one and a step two. And we fill in the information, click on next. And we see the highlighting now goes to step two to show people that we're on step two now. You pick or you fill out the rest of the form and you click on book a tour and the form was sent successfully. This example was a tour booking form, but this will work for any kind of form setup you create inside of Elementor. I'm gonna show you all the steps, how to do it, and we're gonna do that in this tutorial. My name is Bjorn Allpass in WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now I'm gonna show you how we create this multi-step form using the plugins I mentioned. To make this work, you have to have at least three plugins installed in your site. The first one is Elementor, the free version, then Elementor Pro because you want the form functionality, and then dynamic content for Elementor because you want to have the multiple step functionality that that brings to the table. And the dynamic content for Elementor plugin has a lot more going on than this multi-step Elementor forms. There are in fact 59 different widget with and the dynamic content for Elementor plugin has way more going on than just multiple step forms. That's just one of the features of many, many, many features. I, in fact, have a full length tutorial showing you everything that that plugin does. I've linked to that in the card up above and the description down below if you want to check that out. But once we have those installed, we can go to an Elementor page like this one, which is just an Elementor template. And we have a form on here, nice horizontal form. And we're going to change this form to be a multi-step form. Currently, it's a one step. You just fill this out, bing, 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 and click book a tour and it submits the form. And that's great. And this is a small form, so it works that way. But sometimes the information you have to collect is so much that it's intimidating. Having a giant page full of fields to fill out is so much simpler and less intimidating, more inviting to have a shorter form with multiple steps. It's not actually shorter, but have multiple steps so the form looks shorter. And you also increase conversions that way. And creating multiple steps is super simple. Just click into the form editor. So we're editing the form on the left-hand side up here. And all we have to do to create multiple steps, once the dynamic content for Elementor plugin is installed, we click on add item. We call this item, or if we change the type of the item to step, and we give it a label of step one. Drag and drop that to the very top. So this will be the first page or the first part of the multi-step form. Then we add at least one more because you have to have more than one step if you want a multi-step form. I'm going to call this one step two. I'm going to drag this just above tour type. So now we have full name and phone number on one step, and then tour type and choose date on another step. I'm going to make some adjustments really quick. I'm just going to make this full name one half the width, and the phone number half the width. And then for these other two, we don't see them on the screen because Elementor displays as the website would display natively. So there's two ways we can get around that. We can either just move these all up into just one full page until we have the changes we want, and then we move them back down into the areas we want. That's not the best way because it might get confusing if you have a whole lot of form fields. Another way you can do it is if you go down to Steps, and we choose Show All Steps. Turn that on. And now it has a thick border between the steps. So we can see step one and step two, and we can work on them all on one page. And then once we have it all laid out how we want, we can then turn this back off and it goes back into the steps. So that's the way I recommend doing it, but there is also one more way. You can fill this in. Let's just add some random characters for the phone number, click on next, and then go to the next step. But then as soon as you make a change, it will then go back to the first step. So you have to keep going back and forth, back and forth, which can be a pain. So show all steps is the best method, I think. Okay, back to the form fields. Let's make the tour type. Let's make that full width, because it looks way better. Not full width, 50%. And the choose date, make that 50%. There we go, now we have a really simple form that is multi-step. Let's see how it works. Turn off show all steps. We enter our name, enter phone number, click on next. We pick a tour type, we choose a date, click on book a tour, and we're done. So that's a really basic multi-step form. You also wanna show people visually how many steps are left because they need to know that because a multi-step form is less intimidating if you know how much more you have to do and you can decide if you actually want to do it. So you wanna give them an idea of how much there is left. To do that, we go to steps on the left and enable step progress bar. 
and it shows step one and step two. And right now they look like buttons, which I don't think is great. And also if I go into step two, they both stay the same color. So I don't know which step I'm on. I might know how many steps there are, but I don't know which step I'm on. Luckily, we are given a full suite of customization options under styles. So we can style our steps. We have lots of options for that. We can style the navigation buttons, which are the previous and next buttons. And we can also style the steps progress bar. We want to do that in this case. I want to change the colors so they're less like a button because the other buttons on the form are the same color as these up here. So let's make this more subtle. I'm going to choose a light gray background color, gray text color. This is for the normal, so this is how they always appear. And for the active, I'm going to have a darker background color. Mm, let's say like that and darker text. And now when we go to the steps, we can see it changes. So step one is now darker and highlighted. And then step two is darker and highlighted. You can change that however you like to make it appear or to make it visually show that they are progressing along the steps. Then we click on save. Let's see how this looks on the front end. Let's preview the page. We have our form right here, looking pretty good so far. Enter a phone number, tour type. We see the color changing. First we had the step one highlighted, now it's the step two. The date, click on book a tour, and boom, we're done. And that is a multi-step form in Elementor using dynamic content for Elementor. That's how easy it is to make and how easy it is to customize. You can also customize the email that's sent out when this is submitted. And by customize, I mean create an Elementor template that goes with the email. If you want a general idea of what that looks like to have a customized email template from Elementor used for your emails, check out the tutorial in the card above, link down below. It's the same one I referenced earlier, but it's at the specific timestamp where I show you how that looks. And I also might make a tutorial dedicated to that. So I have a form like this and I'll create a tutorial that shows you how to create the custom email template, assign it to your form and have that sent either to you or your customers when you submit the form. And I'll quickly show you something else under content over here. Under actions after submit, we can add an action. I'm going to add dynamic email. This is where you would use the email template. I'm not going to show you the email template in this case. This is where you'd also set it up. But if I click on dynamic email, we have a dynamic email tab show up here. Click on that. Click on add item. And we can customize all sorts of things to do with the email that's sent after submission. You can have a condition when they're sent, when they're not sent. You can change the subject, change the to, change the from, the from name, the reply to, the CC, the BCC. You can have just all fields included like this. You can customize the email through HTML here, or you can make it a template like I said earlier. And I'll probably do a full tutorial on how to customize this template and assign it to your email. But you can have this email created and customized, then you can add another one. And then if you want another one, you got another one and another one. So you can customize a whole suite of emails that are sent out after a form is submitted. And if you have a really long multi-step form, maybe there are multiple people that require different parts of that email or require information from that email. You can customize the messages that go to each of those people as well as send a message, a recap of what the form contained to the person who submitted it. And that is really useful. That is also added by dynamic content for Elementor. It is a paid plugin. It's not expensive. If you go to the pricing page over here, it's 39 per year for a single site, 109 per year for a thousand sites. If you look through this page and look at all the widgets and extensions they have, or just watch the tutorial I referenced earlier, you will see that this is one of the biggest bang for your buck plugins for Elementor. So if you want to check it out, there's a link in the description down below. If you like what you saw and you want to learn more, check out this playlist right here, which has all the videos I currently have about the dynamic content for Elementor. This plugin has a whole lot going on. I've made a bunch of tutorials about it. They may not all be there yet, but they're coming. So check out that playlist. Then click on subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.